Luke chapter 5. Let me ask you to take your Bibles and open up there. There is songs that I picked and the reason that I wanted that to abide with me uh, is because of the reference that's in it about the power of God. That's what I want uh, to cover today in this verse of Luke chapter 5 verse 17. It becomes the necessity of the need uh, for me about where the church is at, where we're at, um, what we have to pray for in seeking this. Of all the things that you read in the Gospels, you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, you see the miracles, you see the power of God demonstrated. I could stand here for the rest of the afternoon and attest to you the, the, the power of God demonstrated over and over again. Um, Ron Ock was in this past week at the Kaiser Assembly that I asked of you to try to make over for the prayer conference. Uh, one of the nights that he was teaching, he uh, gave the uh, example of Rhys Howe, who was an intercessor over in England. Uh, and, and again, I, I've never read it, but I know that the statement is probably true, is that the Prime Minister of England during World War II said, we would never have defeated uh, Germany, England would never have defeated them if it had not been for the prayers of Rhys Howe. Uh, when I'm talking with Ronnie Floyd yesterday, he said he's getting ready to go to Ethiopia to meet the Prime Minister as a representative for Southern Baptists. And I said, was well, he a Christian? And he said, as far as I know, that I've been told that he, that he is. Uh, but Ethiopia, uh, Ron, uh, talk about maps. Uh, Reese Howe used to lay the map of Ethiopia <coughs> out on the floor. And those students that were in his uh, college there in England, uh, day and night praying for the defeat of Germany there in Africa. And uh, you know that literally one of the reasons that the Allies were able to defeat Germany and Italy was because they had captured all of North Africa. Uh, that was where the battles began before they came up through Europe uh, and then of course D-Day uh, in that. But it all happened in a room in England with intercessors, prayer partners, praying over the map, praying over victory over the troops uh, and again, the realization of that is, is that when we enter into our prayer times and we come into our prayer closets, or whether we're praying up here on Saturday night or the first Sunday of the month, these prayers are affecting worldwide. They're not just affecting today. They're affecting generations to come from today. Uh, and that's the reason is that when people say... Why talk about prayer so much? Why emphasize prayer so much? It's all we have in this weapon of our warfare uh, against the enemy uh, in this. This is how we are victors, uh, victorious. This is how we overcome. It is through prevailing prayer. And so when I read this account in Luke chapter 5, I want to back up and I want to start in verse 12. Again, a miracle, uh, and again, uh, it's easy to preach the miracles of Christ. You look at this and you think, is there any disease that came sick of Christ's way that he wasn't able to heal, wasn't able to restore? And is Christ not the same yesterday, today, and forever? Is he not able to do the same today? Uh, but here's, the, here's why we don't see it in such a fashion as this, and you'll pay close attention to verse 17. But I want to start in verse 12. And it came to pass that when he was in a certain city, behold, a man full of leprosy. In other words, he was completely condemned, unclean. Who seeing Jesus, he fell on his face. And he besought him, saying, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. Now, he didn't ask to be that, but he said, Lord, you're able to do it. That's our first thing, belief. You are able to do it. And he put forth his hand, and he touched it. He committed the un, uh, one of the unpardonable there. He never touched a leper. They stayed away from the people. They were supposed to, anybody that would come close to them, they were supposed to cry out, unclean, unclean. You know what that would look like today? 
And immediately the leprosy departed from him. And he charged him to tell no man, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing according as Moses commanded for a testimony unto them. But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness, and he prayed. Now there again we see he performs a miracle. Does that mean is that he takes rest? Uh, he goes back to his normal seat? No, it says is that he left that miracle, went into the wilderness, and there began to pray. How much were you alone this week with God? How much was you in prayer this week with God? You know why we go back to work? You know why we go back to our families? We go back to our way of life without the power of God? It's because we won't do those two things. Get alone in the wilderness and pray. Too many people said, I need a vacation. I need a vacation. And I like what Raven, he said, no, you need a cave. You don't need a vacation. You need to go get alone with God and get spirit filled. And then you'll be ready to go out there and to face whatever that the world and Satan may throw at you. Now, verse 17. And so it came to pass that on a certain day, as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law, sitting by which were come out of every town of Galilee and Judea and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Boy, I like that phrase. And not that he did heal. The power was present. You know what power looks like? It's almost like an electricity in the air. You, you're very familiar with static electricity, right? We as kids always love to do that. Man, we get our socks on and run across the carpet and run up and touch. <laughs> Give a good old shock to them. Ouch! I love that. I'm, <laughs> power. Static electricity. There's power in the air. The power of God to heal is present. Why, why is the evidence, why is the miracles, why is the testimony so rare and so far between in this? The power of the Lord was present to heal them. And I have to laugh is that his greatest enemies were sitting in the audience. The Pharisees had come. They didn't come to bless. They didn't come to support. They didn't come uh, to get something from the Lord out of this for salvation or for their own healing. They came to ridicule, they came to chastise, they came to mock, they came to bring discouragement. You don't know anybody like that, do you? Don't you love those saying, oh, doom, doom, despair. If I had no bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. You don't know anybody like that, right? I'm telling you is that when we look at this, my hunger, my desire is to see the power of the Lord present in the midst of all these things that are self-evident of what we're facing today. We see, again, the issues that are at hand across our nation. Who has the power to un undo ISIS? Who has the power to undo Planned Parenthood? Who has the power to change this course of nation that we're facing today of all the evil that's rising up in the midst? You know, I... I I see these headlines and these discouraging things that are out there today, and again, it gets mind-numbing because I deal with it all the time, and praying against it, standing against it, rallying troops against it, for you all to come alongside me and pray against it, because I don't see victory. I know that God's power is supreme. Thou, how great thou art. I know what he has done. I, like I said, I could stand you here for the rest of the afternoon and tell you what he has done. But what I want to be able to do is to tell you what he is doing and what he shall do. That's what I want. I want to be able to walk into the church services and to feel the static electricity in the air and to say, the Lord is in this place. You remember Jacob, when he went out and he was, and he was escaping, and he said, surely the presence of the Lord is is in this place. The evidence of that is not proof to everybody sitting here. Not every one of you will get back in your cars and say, that surely the presence of the Lord is on this acre of land right here. You'll miss God. Now if I want to take my shoes off and run across and get static electricity and shock, you'll say, that crazy preacher shocked me. That might be good for some of you. 
don't tempt me. I might grab the 220 wire that's running out of the electric box back there and uh, say, come here, I'm going to hold this and you grab hold of my left hand. Bring, bring a charge to You know why? Because the power is missing in the churches today. Now I know why the power is missing. It's not because the electric bill hasn't been paid. It's not because uh, it's because we have disconnected ourselves with God. You got too many Christians that sit in the pews with the ability, with the opportunity that we have we have more in this nation. And a realization of this has just continued to daunt me in my thoughts and process of all this. We are without excuse about why we don't study to show ourselves approved unto God. Pastors that never open their Bibles till Saturday night because they need a sermon for Sunday morning. Never, never read the Bible. Never study the Bible. They couldn't tell you, uh, Sunday school teachers, I, I have sat under pastors and teachers, and, and they were pathetic. And I say that, and again, not to be just mean-spirited about it, but to be present the realization of this. They didn't have the first clue about what the Bible says. So therefore, they are capable, and most of them did it. They taught half-truths. They taught uh, supposition dangerous to, to do suppositions. Well, now, this might have been... I've listened to people stand and preach and teach on a complete sermon on suppositions. What might have been? They would take this verse that it says in the, in the Pharisees and the doctors of the law sitting by. They would spend an entire sermon or a Sunday school lesson on who those Pharisees and doctors were. That's not the importance of that verse. The importance of that verse doesn't matter about the Pharisees and the doctors. What matters is, is that the power of the Lord was present to heal them. How many people walked away having been healed then? 50,000 people will go to a big city. They'll go to an auditorium. They'll go to a stadium and sit there and watch Benny Hinn do his theatrics. And, and walk away from that. And I got a woman that I can testify... She went clear up to Pittsburgh to be healed of her disease. And oh, glorify God. She's healed. She's healed. Two months later, I saw her. She was worse than what she was before she began. She wasn't healed. The power of the Lord was not present to heal. Or she would have been healed. You can't show me one person. in this. you think this guy that was healed of leprosy, his leprosy come back? How many of you think that his leprosy come back? I don't think he saw one ounce of leprosy on his skin for the rest of his days. Do you? And i got too many verses in the Bible that I could back up with this is that their, their skin was as baby skin. I don't know about you, but you look at my hands. They're in this weather. They're cracked. They're calloused. They're, uh, it's rough going. Baby skin. Oh, that's something different, isn't it? Sure. Soft. Good. Got any age spots on the back of your hands? <laughs> Got any white hairs, gray hairs, the aging there? Anybody got any arthritis or bursitis you're dealing with in the shoulder, legs? Power to heal takes care of all that. How is it that, eight, that Moses, being 120 years old, still had his good eyes, still had his good health. And, and how is it that when you read about him is that it says is that his, his aging process had stopped. It wasn't because he was taking vitamins and supplements. I'm not discouraging that. I'm just saying that wasn't the reason back then. It was because the power of the Lord was present to heal and he was healed. The evidence of God's power is what we need to be asking for. Evidence. Not because we are uh, questioning God, that if God doesn't heal the way that we want or heal in the means that we want, is that, uh, that God says, oh, then I, I'm just not going to do it because you ask me. But I'm saying that is because we need the power of the Lord to heal because there's not, nothing else that's going to help us in this day and age. And I'm not just talking about physical calamities. I, I'm, I'm sorry about the cancer. I, I'm sorry about uh, leukemia. I'm sorry about uh, the issues that of eyesight and diabetes and, and 
blood, high blood pressure. I, I'm sorry about all those things that are in affliction against us today. But the physical ass assault that we're seeing today uh, is running its course across the land, isn't it? And isn't the power to heal evidence? Isn't it still the same? Where is it? Why isn't anybody crying out for it? You ever seen such a mess in homes today? Marriages? Relationships? Broken from the top right on down. Where, where is the power of God to heal the home? Isn't it the same? Where is the power to heal in our nation today? On the streets? I was down here in D.C. I got there. The, the, it was supposed to be there at 8.15. I roll in at 8.13. Boy, I cut that one quick. I roll in there. I'm in downtown D.C. Verizon Center right there. Family Research Council right there on G Street. Now, I've been there enough is that I'm starting to learn D.C. That's scary. That's, that's scary to me. This has been the last two times that I've been in D.C. There is always somebody on the street corner that's that's mental. Demon, I call it demon. You can call it what you want. I know it's demon. I'm walking up the street and there is a guy across the way, a homeless man, a street a street man, and he's yelling all the way up the street. And I know it's an attack. It's an assault on me right here, right now. And so here we are facing this in the midst of that. We come to that assault. Where is the power of the Lord to heal the demonic in this? Here's what we're facing in that. It's not always known to people today. After the fact, we know. After the fact, we face this. When we read the headlines, is that they killed 12. Or, or they uh, did some kind of horrible tragedy that we're reading about in the midst of this, in this day and time. But again, if we had any sense about us, of preventative prayers, of saying the power of the Lord is present to heal. And so we pray preventative prayers of saying, don't let me pick up that newspaper, don't let me turn on the internet, don't let me turn on the car radio and hear about this evil that has been perpetrated and done when the power of the Lord was present to heal in the house of the Lord, on the day of the Lord, with the people of the Lord, because the promises of the Lord were there. The power of the Lord was present. Is it here today? Is it running through your veins? Is it running through your mind and your heart saying it's here? Surely the presence of the Lord is here. That it changes your mind processes to say, I'm so sick and tired of being sick and tired of the way life is going on. Missing the miracles. Missing the moments. You know what divine moments are? Do you know what it is when God shows up and to say this is nobody else but God? It's evident. And everybody knows it. Those things are far too, too far apart on the calendar for me. I read this verse and it becomes the prayer. It becomes that essence of this. I want to back up real quick just to give you this. In chapter 4, verse 32. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for his word was with what? Power. Power to save. Power to heal. Power to correct. Power to restore. I, I, I go through the midst of this uh, and, and look at these things. Uh, uh, the power of the blood. There's power to do what in the blood of Christ? What did the blood of Christ do for you? Cleanse me from all iniquity. It took out of my very DNA the very iniquity that Adam and Eve birthed in me. Why do we have the capacity to sin? Why is the capacity of evil for one person greater than the next? We talked about it a generation ago. These kids would not, you would never have dared act like some of these kids, would you? The, the headlines that we're reading, cops being shot, cops shooting kids because they had a play gun a generation ago we never would have dreamed that these things would be out there would we what's different is it the capacity for evil always been the same 
then why is it spiking right now? Why is it on a threshold and on a dementia, dementia, uh, dementia of where we've never been before? I tell you, it's because of this verse. That the power of the Lord is removed. The power of the Lord is removed from the church. And if it's removed from the church, you better know that it's removed from a lost, evil generation. And the evidence that the church doesn't care that it's absent. I liked it when I saw the power of God evident. I liked it when I saw someone getting saved. Every, every two months we were seeing baptisms when I was growing up. Every, every week it was like there was something else glorifying the miracle that God was doing and working in the midst of the people. And you could only say that this was directly due because of God's power was there. People would sit, show up at church and they'll say, that's, that's the hand of God. Things was, miracles were supplied and done. And my life is a testimony of that. My golly, of all the things that I have testified and seen, but I'm saying is that that past tense is what I'm talking about. This is present tense. And the power of the Lord was present. Not, what good is it going to do me tomorrow? I haven't got there yet. What good is it going to do me yesterday? It's already come and gone. What about today? What's the need of your heart today? What's the need facing us tonight? Our nation's sinking. I sat there and watched in this conference that I was at yesterday. It was a recognition of uh, religious freedom and how it's being taken away from us. And again, that's on all of our minds. You know, a football coach in Oregon that says he went out on the 50-yard line after the ball game. He never asked anybody to join him. He just goes out on the 50-yard line after the teams have shook hands and they went their separate way. And he went out on the 50-yard line and he kneeled down and he prayed. Never coerced anybody, never asked anybody, but other players began to join. But that is infringing on somebody's rights, so they sue them. They suspend them from school. Brenda, wouldn't you like that? When, because you carry your Bible into school and somewhere, and immediately the principal stops you at the door and says, you can't bring that Bible on this public ground. Uh, just pack your bag and go home. Yeah. Two, two caterers, a woman who, who had the ability to bake a cake. Not all of us are blessed to bake, know how to bake a cake. But has that ability. Wants to start a business. Is it an American way to start a business and make a way for yourself? And because these homosexuals come and say, you will make us a cake, and they say, no, we won't. That's against our principles. Is that they take them to court and they're sued $130,000, $170,000 and they lose their business they lose their reputation and they lose it all because two people wanted to be derogatory where is the power of God present to heal the power of God present on those homosexuals or those lesbians that came and said to them that immediately they fell under conviction and they said woe unto us and that what happened when Isaiah met God over in Isaiah chapter 6 Woe to me, I am undone, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, because I have seen the Lord. Wasn't that what happened when God came down on Mount Sinai, and he was speaking to Moses, and all the children of Israel backed up, and they said, he's going to kill us all. The fear of the Lord, the power of the Lord was present, wasn't it? In those accounts of Scripture. And again, past tense. John Wesley said that there were 4,000 people laid out in the fields because the power of the Lord was so strong upon them as that they became unconscious, laying on the ground under conviction of sin. When's the last time you saw somebody under the conviction of sin lay prostrate for hours? Oh Lord, please forgive me. Come into my heart. Save my soul in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, I'm saved. Let's go. That's godly sorrow unto repentance. Never ashamed. Never broke. Never weep. The power of the Lord never pressed. I want to get back to that. I want to get back to when when the old Reverend Nicholson used to preach and he sat there and people were so under conviction is that they would tear up the paper hymn books 
that were there. And you could see where they sat because they had piles of paper piled up under conviction. And they couldn't sit in the pews. They had to run to the altar, not because the invitation was given, but because the power of God was so strong upon them. That's what we need to see again. And we're not going to see a change out there until there's a change in here. Until there's a change here. And the power of the Lord was present. You want to know what to pray? You want to know how to pray? You want to know what to request? Oh God, send your power again. Send it upon me. Send it upon thee. Send it upon your church. You realize what it would look like today if the power of the Lord fell on all the church in North America and they rose up and went back to school and went back to work? Barring Martin Luther King federal holiday, back on Tuesday, back to work, back to school. What that would look like? We would change the nation in one day if the power of the Lord was present to heal them. But because the power of the Lord isn't present, because we've got too many TV shows to watch, we've got too many errands to run, we've got too much time on the phone, these people and the opportunities trying to learn who I am at this other church, I said, I hope they're spending as much time on learning who God is as what they're trying to figure out who I am. Now, which visor group are you from? Don't worry about it. Did you know who God is? Biggest question that you and I have to answer today is what is the sin that does so easily beset? What is it in your heart? What is it in your life? What is it in your attitude that is keeping the power of the Lord absent instead of present to heal? That's what the church has to answer. I've got to unconfess sin. I've got to get. I've got to deal with this, man. I got things. I've got things going on in my mind and my heart that ought not be going on. This has got to stop. So the power of the Lord can be present. But so long as the church, so long as we as Christians hold on to our sin, you can mark it down. The power of the Lord will be absent from us, and we'll continue to meander along through life, through the worship services, week after week and still facing that where people will get back to their vehicles. And my greatest, most damning thought is that we'll go back home today and we'll miss the presence of the Lord. A guy up in New York City used to preach in the Methodist Church. It was one of the most prominent Methodist churches there in New York. His daughter wrote and testified is that every night on Sunday night, my father would come home and throw himself down across the bed and sob uncontrollably because of the lostness of men, women, and children and say, why won't they come? Why won't they come? Agonizing because the power of the Lord was not present but absent from any sun Sunday service. The aggravation of it. The condemnation of it. Satan wins another round. Don't you hate to let Satan win around? I watch those boxing matches and the, the, the commentators are all so and so won this round and the other guy won this round. Uh, I don't know about you, but giving up rounds is not my specialty. Playing basketball, giving up points is not my specialty. I don't favor that too much. And I see too many people today satisfied with that. Oh well, it's only a couple days. Well, I've only been out of my Bible a couple of days. You know, 17 days into this year. I'm, you know, I haven't read it every day. Yeah, I've missed some times of prayer. Yeah, I've missed a couple opportunities to witness. No biggie. I still got the rest of the year in front of me. Not for those people. You'll never get that chance back. Do you know what anguish is? Do you know what sorrow is? It's that guy over there in Augusta who came to me and said is that his buddy had had a heart attack and went in to see. And he said, and the Lord told me to witness to him, but he said, I was so, so felt, and so inadequate to say anything to him about eternity. I didn't know how to bring it up. And so he said, I just prayed with him and left. And he said, and he died the next day. Lost him without Christ. He said, that ought to be forever etched on my mind. Because he blew the opportunity that God gave him. Every opportunity is a divine moment that God gives to us and that we are to be ready to speak, ready to pray, 
ready to serve. Can't do it in your own strength. You can't do it by saying, well, I'm going to try the best I can. I, if you're trying the best you can, then that's humanism. That's, that, that's never in our abilities to do. I can do all things. That's the motto of the world. But that's not the scripture. The scripture is I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me, isn't it? Isn't that the verse? You and I can't heal anybody. We can't heal any homes. We can't heal any hearts. We can't heal any nation. The power of the Lord when it is present. It is able to do all things and to do them well. It is my greatest longing and desire to get to that place. Too many times. Too many times. Bowed ahead in prayer. Met with other groups. Walked away from those opportunities. And God chastised me. He said, did you forget the urgency of the hour? No. Then why didn't you why didn't you cry out? Why didn't you agonize? Why didn't you mourn? I, I don't know. I felt like I did a good job. Not satisfactory. You know what it is when the Lord chastises you? Could have done better. Could have done more. Accountability. Where much is given, much is required. You and I, small as we are, have given, been given much in accountability. You and I can change the course of history in this little room because we have the power of prayer that works for us. But the power of prayer doesn't work if the power of the, the presence of the Lord is not there. It has to become our greatest hunger, desire, and need. The power of the Lord was present. You know how it was evident in the Old Testament? Remember when, when Moses built the temple, the tent? What, what hung over there for 40 years? What guided them for 40 years in the wilderness? There was a cloud by day and a fiery pillar of cloud by night, wasn't it? For 40 years, it never left them. Everybody could see it. And when it poked up and moved, they were supposed to move. And when it stopped, they stopped. You know what we need again today? Is that same thing in our life. Leading us. Guiding us. Hovering over this place. I, I wish it was evident. I do. I wish that every car that I heard go by while we're here in church or here at prayer meeting on Saturday night, and I hear all these vehicles running up this small road of Fox Hall, could see the, the glory of God hovering upon this place, and that even they would have to say, the power of the Lord is present upon that place. You say, is that is that ever happened before? Yes, that's happened before. Testimonies and evidences of revival that when they stepped off of a public domain onto private domain of church property, immediately that static electricity flowed through them and they'll say, This is God. And they knew it. They drove up into the church parking lot and they began to feel it. It is testified that in, in the Great Awakenings in the eighteen hundreds that the Navy was out in the Atlantic Ocean and when God's powerful prayer meetings were happening on the East Coast and they pulled into the ports of Philadelphia and they pulled into the ports of Baltimore and they pulled into the ports of New York City under a hundred miles from shore is that the power of God would start to fall on those Navy vessels and ships and before they all got to shore they was all converted soundly and they ran off the boats and ran to the first church that they could get to to be born again and to give their hearts and their lives to Christ. Testify. Documented. Written. And that the same power and presence of God as yesterday, as today? Where is it at? It's absent, isn't it? power of the Lord is absent. And you and I, to know these things, somewhere in us have to have a petition. Somewhere you have to have a desire to say, I'm just tired of living without it, Lord. I want it. Oh God, the power of the Lord was present to heal them. I sometimes get convicted when I go into a funeral home and look down in the casket knowing that the power of God is able to resurrect the dead. You ever look at it like that? 
Didn't Christ raise Lazarus? Didn't Christ raise the, the widow's son in, in the city of Nain? Didn't, didn't Peter go in and speak to Tabitha? Tabitha arise and get up and Dorcas was restored? Didn't Paul go in to the man that fell asleep on him from the balcony, fell down and he was dead? And Paul ran down and said, he, he, he'll be okay. And he was restored and Paul got up and finished the sermon. Isn't this the same accounts of Scripture? And the power of the Lord was present to resurrect the dead. Where's that at today? Duma over in Africa, 1950s, 1960s. It's still the same. Why is it missing? Because the church has forgotten it. And we have become so content to live without it. It's okay. It's satisfactory. Do you think it's okay to the Lord that His church lives without the power of the presence of the Lord to heal? I think it just bothers him to no end. My children don't want me. If Georgie is my bride, my wife would say, I don't want you to talk to me. I don't want you to speak to me. I don't want you to touch me. I don't want you to come around me. Okay. I guess that's what you want. I wouldn't be satisfied. Break my heart that my own wife don't want me. What do you think God the Father says to His bride here on this earth when they say they don't want me? Everything else is important to you but me. Oh God, forgive us. We wonder why the power of the Lord is absent. You can't get people to come to the church. You can't get people to read the Word. You can't get people to talk about Him. You can't get people to pray. And we think God's happy with that? What a day and an age we need. If ever there was a need. And I hear this prayer offered all the time in these places I'm going. God, if we ever needed you, it's now. And that's true. That is true. I agree with that. I'm not discounting that. But if we was really believing that we needed God more today than ever, I'm telling you people would pray differently. Don't you pray differently when you get that call at 2 o'clock in the morning? Don't you pray differently when you hear those words, cancer? Don't you pray differently when that tragedy has hit? Absolutely. And why don't we pray differently now? Because we're content to live without the power of the Lord being absent from us. God put a hunger and desire within each one of us not to be satisfied anymore. Every church service that we have here on this little place, in this little building, may the glory of the Lord come upon it. In your everyday time of Bible and prayer and meditation with Him, may He speak to you and reveal Himself. It is the blessings of the Lord that we seek, not the cursings of the Lord. But what can we do if the power of the Lord is absent? The lights go off right now. We get our phones out, turn our little battery light on, and I walk around in the midst of that, and I go back to see if a breaker's flown, thrown to see if something is that, and we'll say, well, the lights are out, can't see nothing in the, in the power box, so must be out on the electric line, so I'll have to go call uh, the power company. It's outside of our control. Can't change it. Don't have electricity, can't run the lights, can't run the heat, right? It's done. Go home. You realize how close we are for God saying that to the church in North America? You're done. Not because of the evil that's out there, but because we was content to walk and to live without the power of the Lord present, the here and the now. Cry, oh God. We can't go on like this. The end is too too rapidly coming. I watched that yesterday. They had an entire screen of all this activity of that lost world and their evil intent, suing churches, coming against pastors, coming against employees. I'm talking people that have worked 40 years in, in the businesses of engineering and high business work and, and accredited, accredited, 
by their peers and removed because they stood against homosexuality. Removed because they believed in the Bible. Removed because they said, I've got to serve Christ first. Army officers, chaplains, naval chaplains, military personnel, generals have been removed from office because they stood for the cause of Christ. On one right after the other. And that's all within three years. All within three years time. Do you realize how bad it's going to look in December of 2016 if the power of the Lord doesn't come to convert? And we know today we have the most needful thing that could be done for us to change it. The power of prayer. And if there was ever a time for us to exercise it, it was now. Confession. Forgive us for getting to this place. You never got here, but we're here. Two. Adoration and worship. The power of the blood is still sufficient to cleanse us from all sin. The power of God is still able to control the world that we live in. And three. God, if your power doesn't come to the present, then we'll continue to remove, be removed because of its absence. That's our loved ones. That's our way of life. It's on us. I don't go to the politicians. I, I don't run to the Charleston to talk to the governor or the senators or any of them. I come before the pastors and the churches and I come before the Lord God because it is in this place that can heal and fix what's wrong with the present day that we're living. And you and I, to know this and to not do anything about it, only hasten the end of our time. Let us cry out to God today. Lord, while we have now, have mercy on us, O oh God, because it's changing so fast out there, so fast. And hell is mocking us. And God is standing there waiting. Are you ever going to do anything about it? Oh God, may the power of the Lord be present. And then we can say in, in one unison voice, surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I want to give you time today for our invitation to cry out, to be before the Lord, to exalt in your pew where you're at. Spend your time, realization of this.